I want to give you a start on the Carlos and Clarita project that we're going to be doing. So we're going to go over the first part of this, and then I'm going to let you guys work on the remaining parts on your own. When I get back, you're going to have some time to ask questions. And so if you get stuck, you're welcome to ask me when I get back, and we'll keep working on the project. So according to this description, we said we've been talking about this the last few weeks, which is not true, clearly. So today, I need to give you some background with it. We are going to help Carlos and Clarita open up a business for pet sitting. And so we need to make a decision on how many cat pens and dog runs that we need to set up with an eye toward making as much money as possible. That is our final goal with the business. And uh, we need to think about these things before we set up the business so we don't end up in trouble and take too many cats or dogs on that we can't handle. And so we've got some constraints that you can see on your first paper and we'll, we'll go through the first one of those. So we're going to also use our skills for graphing the systems of inequalities and the purpose of that is to try and help us narrow down our decision to be able to uh, find something that would be appropriate as well as something that would make us as much money as possible. So when I grade this, I will be looking for a few different elements. First of all, I need to know if the graphs are actually accurate. So they have to be correct. And uh, I would like all of you to use X as the number of cat or dog runs and Y to represent the number of cat pens just so that I can have all of the graphs be the same. It's much easier for me to grade that way, so thank you. Second, what was, was the decision based on mathematical reasoning? In other words, when you decide how many cat pens and dog runs you have, there it's a valid solution. It makes sense in the context of the constraints. Was the presentation clear? In other words, are your graphs clear? Did you write down your inequalities and explanations in a way that I can actually read them? And as an added incentive, of course, I want you to make as much money as possible, and so I will give a prize to the student or group that earns the most money in the end. So we need to be consistent all together. The business will run for 90 days. So we're gonna calculate our total profits based on that 90 days. All right, let's take a look at our feeding time constraint here on page one. We know a few different things that we have 12 minutes for each day for each cat, 20 minutes for each day for each dog, that's how long it takes to feed them. And Carlos can spend a total of eight hours each day doing these feedings. And so the amount of time spent feeding needs to be less than or equal to that eight hours. Okay, we have a bit of a complication with units. We are at hours here and these are in minutes and that's gonna be hard to compare. So I'm gonna convert either everything to minutes or everything to hours. Both of those would work. I personally would prefer to convert this to minutes. It's a little easier for me in my mind, but it will work either way. So eight hours happens to be 480 minutes. All right, now we need to calculate the amount of time spent feeding. We know that X stands for the number of dogs that we have. It takes 20 minutes for each of those dogs. So the total time spent feeding dogs is 20x. Y is the number of cats, and it takes 12 minutes a day for each cat. So 12 times Y is going to be the amount of time spent feeding each cat. So we get 20x plus 12y is less than or equal to 480. All right, so going to page two, I'm gonna write 20x plus 12y less than or equal to 480. All right, on part two it says to explain in plain English what each of those symbols represents. So we're going to go through here and we say the 20 represents the amount of time for one dog, amount of time to feed one dog. Feed one dog. And then 20x altogether, 20x is the total time for the dogs. 
Okay, the 12 is the time for one cat. Time for one cat. The 12y altogether, 12y is the time for all cats. And then over here, the 480 is the total amount of time Carlos has. Total time available for Carlos. All right. So that's what we're going to do on part number two. I want to know that you understand each of those pieces of the equation and what they mean. On question number three, we're going to need to graph it. And so I'm going to go back here. I find it easiest to graph this if I put it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to solve for y by subtracting 20x from both sides. That gives us 12y is less than or equal to negative 20x plus 480. Finish this out by dividing by 12. Divide both of these by 12. And we get y is less than or equal to. And 4 goes into both of those. So that'll be negative 5 thirds simplified. And then 480 divides nicely by 12. It's 40, so plus 40. This will be a lot easier for me to figure out my shading and my y-intercept. And so I find mostly for the shading that this is nice. So I've got my y-intercept of 40. I'm going to shade below. This is going to be a solid line. So we're going to go over to the graph and then we'll use our slope of negative 5 thirds x. All right. So we add y is less than or equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 40. All right, now we need to graph these all on the same grid. We're going to create a system of inequalities, which will help us know what is our possible choices. We're tasked with doing this in red pencil. I don't really care what color you do it in. So if you end up doing it in another color, you're not going to lose points for that. So here we go. We have a y-intercept of 40. That's right here. And then our slope is negative 5 thirds. So we're going to go down 5 and over 3. Now you'll notice that these are going by 2's. So if we go down 5, I'm going to end up in the middle. So instead of going down 5 and over 3, I think it's going to be a little easier for me to find and be accurate if I go down 10 and over 6. So I'm going to go down 10 and over 6. That would put me at 30 and 6 there. And then down 10 and over 6 again, puts me at 20 and 12. And then we go to 10 and 18. And then we go down to the bottom right here. And we don't need to go any further because negative numbers have no meaning. We decided it was a solid line and we're going to shade below. So again, I would recommend shading this very lightly like we talked about in class. Otherwise, you're going to not be able to see the others. So we can see our, where we have solutions and where we don't have solutions. The other graphs are going to modify this. So let's say we had our second one and we ended up graphing like this and shading below right here. Well, we can see that this area that had solutions before now does not work for the blue. And so we've narrowed down our solutions into this area right here. And we're going to continue to narrow things down with all four of those. We need to make sure that we fit all four constraints. If you pick a solution that does not fit one of those constraints, then you're going to have to go on back and find something different and modify as needed. Thank you, and good luck, you guys.